and welcome to the New World Review. I'm Grandline Waifu and today we're looking at the face of a human who is in love and has remembered his person. Oh and he's dying. Let's get into all the reasons humans suck. Episode 134 and we got treated to all the extra reasons humans suck. And before the episode even started properly I was mad because of the use of the concept of humanity and inhumanity so I want to talk about that for a moment. Humans cannot by definition be inhumane. Not in this context right? Because we have another sentient communicative species who's related and can be used used for a direct comparison. So we can't call human behavior inhumane because it becomes tantamount to calling certain behaviors monstrous. And that doesn't make sense at the best of times, but it makes even less sense in this context where we have what people would call monsters. These ants are supposed to be our analog for monsters, but how can they be if humans are called monsters because they're doing things that don't fit the definition of human and are being called inhumane for it? You see, it's a cycle that makes no sense. And so we have the great destroyers, also known as humans doing what humans do which is crush each other the way they crush bugs and ain't that awful. This entire episode was about humanity and ant life and the understanding or the question of which one Meroem favours. Having watched the episode I think he favours ant kind. I think he managed to avoid the worst parts of humanity and has managed to supersede the bloodthirstiness of humanity. The part where we just destroy and kill because we don't see any other way out of conflict. The fact that the poison they're all being affected by is continuing its chain of destruction is pretty horrific. The idea that it's a combination of the ant poison you can set down that they'll take back to the nest and like just decimate a nest and standard bug spray is quite disgusting. So when that poison chain of inhumanity comes up, I would argue that actually it's the most human thing that could have happened because the ants wouldn't have even thought to do something like this. Nor would Meroem want to do something like this, something this devastating. The humanity of this matches the behaviours we deem a lone wolf or isolated incident or a monster did it. Like we, we, we say those things. But who or what created the monster? The culture the monster grew up in. Anything that humans can create is perfectly human. Including this horrific bug bomb which is going to kill, will kill everyone in fact at some point. I mean, and, and the first thought I had upon realising how far ranging this poison can go is, um, did they consider what happens if he goes to human civilization? Because I'm sure the humans either didn't think about that or did, and either one of those is an awful, awful consequence that continues to point toward how awful humans are. Perf's life is very complex right now and seeing the slow process of death through his eyes is interesting. In fact, given how to date we've had characters understand everything about their impending doom and think about it as it happens, there's a lot of power to that concept here. We have three people who are going to die standing over the body of their fate on a small yuppie. One thing I loved about this episode and the way it was animated is that we legitimately had a moment and frankly speaking the whole episode was a soap opera about Meroem's eyes. Everything was dramatic turns and new information for Meroem and that's actually quite fascinating considering we spent so much of the time not seeing any reaction from him at all. And then combine that with Perf legitimately saying, I must find a way to lie by telling the truth. The cuteness of Welfin's thought process is that he had to think so very hard to say literally the one thing he was sent to do and for that, for that Welfin, for that Welfin, we stand, we stand. Even though he had to do what Gon did and age up a whole lot to do it. Like, let's not forget, he aged up. He did, he did a Gon for that. He did a Gon, he changed the outcome of the whole damn thing. Welfin is the true hero here. That and his desire to find his king, who I still believe is Meroem, but without knowing it. And that there is the point where I think Meroem surpasses humans to become Ant, because in walking away from Welfin, what he was doing was allowing someone who defies him to survive. There's no ego there. Yes, he's distracted by his impending advancement on his field child, but he's also uncaring of the things that humans get so caught up on, which is, hey, this guy insulted me to my back. How dare he? I am mad. Let fight now. And at that point, Welfin has more than redeemed himself and has shown both the loyalty and hostility that Puff sees coming from him. And he's right. Meroem is unstoppable, except by the poison, which will stop him eventually. It's just about how quickly, given how powerful he is and how many people he messes up before he does. And between them, the king and Puff love the classical drama of self-sacrifice without actually sacrificing themselves to anything. Yuppie gave literally of himself to Meroem and grew smaller and 
weaker for it. It's interesting to me that Puff did not actively become smaller, which does make sense because he wasn't full size when he did it, but his power was largely maintained for a very long time. I don't really understand it, but it is interesting from a consumption point of view. Speaking of consumption, Welfin's fear of being eaten made him an unappealing meal, which is possibly the best way to avoid being eaten and is highly adaptive. The idea that his first and last moments were so significant to him put him on a par with Meroam, who has one thing he wishes to do and one thing that he's gonna do. And that one word therefore stands for everything. Kamugi. It represents love, care, compassion, emotion, heartbreak. It's all there in that one word. And it's so potent that even Puff understands it. He understands the value. He finally understands that he's a sacrifice. He understands that the loyalty he's sacrificing himself to is giving more than he gave in every other power. All that energy he used just to see how much the king loves her. If we learn anything, Puff is more human than Ant in those moments, but seeing how much the king values Kamugi helps him realize perhaps how much he values his king, regardless of what Meroem decides to do with his life. And so let's move on to episode 135. Um, my heart? I was right, I guess, though that's small comfort. Kamugi did essentially kill him. She was his downfall. If he hadn't been focused on her, he'd have prepared for attack. He wouldn't have sent Pito away from him to save her. Puff wouldn't have put energy into killing her. And yet we wouldn't have had the heartbreaking climax to this arc that we got. The political side of the situation reasserted itself because humans are the true monsters. We get that. We were lucky enough to learn that not enough of the right people died and that others did who really shouldn't have. I am so mad. So shaking mad about Bizef surviving. But you know, <clears throat> Yeah, and let's ignore that because this entire episode was about love and we're not going to find that in humanity. Meroem found his girl. He got the girl and he died with her, almost like an Antigone in the cave, if Haman had died with her instead of leaving her to her fate alone. As Puff's wings flew off into the breeze, it made it really clear to me that he died as a human, while the two in the dark died as ants, with the beautiful fireflies of searching around them. I can't even begin to say how beautiful this episode was and I kind of don't want to say how beautiful it was because how am I supposed to quantify it? The whole arc was dedicated to understanding the difference between human and ant and at the end we're left with two creatures who entirely eschew their respective entities to just become precisely what they were in the dark. By the end, Meroem couldn't see either. By the end, Meroem had become as weak as Kamugi, but stronger than all those he left behind. He was still the most powerful creature in the world because he had abandoned all sense of hatred and hostility left to find contentment in the woman he loved. And then of course we have Palm who simply wanted for him to hurt her, essentially. She simply wanted him to give her exactly what she was used to, exactly what she expected. She wanted to be destroyed. She wanted to be hurt. She wanted to be used. She wanted him to be cruel to her. But it turns out that ants simply are not that. Ants are. He only wanted one thing and he did everything he could to try to get that. She just wanted to watch true love and so she got to. He's part human, she's part ant, and they both got what they wanted. I feel bad for Palm because at the end of all of it, all she wanted was to be cared for and to be loved and she couldn't even have that. And now she's an ant and it's almost as though she has more capacity to love and more capacity to care and more capacity for everything else. And she doesn't have that. She doesn't get to have that. The stripping of all the honorifics was again a beautiful touch. The passage of time as shown by the credits rolling with memories of their time together. The fact that Meroem never beat her at the game, that she's so totally managed to conquer him. The shift in art to softness and the darkness at the end. All of it contributed to the closing of a beautiful arc and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I find I almost don't care what happened to Gon and Kiwa because we have our love story ending. I have no idea what the last few episodes are going to be because to be honest I feel as though this was the best ending the series could have had. Yes there are loose ends and I still kind of want to know what happened to Hisoka and I don't know Kurapika and Leorio and Kiwa and Gon I guess. I guess maybe. But I'd be okay okay with this ending, given the protagonist change and frankly everything feels complete. And yet I probably will be back to watch more because I know there is more, but not today because that's it from me. If you enjoyed this tearful trip down memory lane, like, share, subscribe, do all the fun things, talk to your friends and I'll see you next time. Ooh, okay. bah, bah, bah.